is by far why I think this workshop uh, is going to be focusing on the PCMM aspect. A quick question, uh, how many of you have uh, high maturity CMMI, any constellation working knowledge? Fantastic. How many PCMM competency uh, uh, experiences? Okay, uh, that's good. Uh, we will soon see that you are actually going to raise your arm for the second question after this workshop is done. Like I said, you consciously don't know it is PCMM, but you unconsciously are doing it. Okay? How many of us don't have any career aspirations? No career aspirations? How many of us have career aspirations? All of us. This evokes to that. These five process areas of the PCMM evokes to how you build your career in an organization. Okay, and we'll see how. Now, this is going to be the pace of this workshop. Am I too fast, too slow? Can I speed up? How are we doing? It's okay to go? Yeah, all right, okay. Now, one of the key things within this integration of PCMM to high maturity is that there are so many common themes that both of them share. One of them is institutionalization happens through goals. In the case of CMMI, we have general goals. In the case of PCMM, there is a goal called institutionalization goal. Okay? And it pretty much talks to the same things. You have to have a policy, you've got to have resources, you've got to have them trained, and so on and so forth. There has to be review. The same stuff happens in institutionalization. And both the frameworks actually talk today of particip participatory culture. Once upon a time in the CMMI constellations, IPPD was optional, but no longer. It's part and parcel of the model. So participatory culture is a common theme today between the two frameworks. And both of them, the orientation of the high maturity is to minimize rebirth, which is the true hidden factory. You don't want to be in an eternal mode of rebirth, and therefore you want to define a process, right? So let's look at some of the common themes. The PCMM, per se, concerns itself to the domain of workforce management and development. It actually provides process area practices which help you to define workforce capability development, okay? It's a stage model, level two to level five. At each level, you grow a certain sense of a culture in the organization. Level two, you build a culture of commitment. And a culture of commitment is as simple as your yes is a yes, your no is a no, right? which is always the hard thing to do uh, in an organization. So you build a culture of commitment, and then you start talking of building a culture of professionalism at level three. And when you transition out from three to four, you build a culture of empowerment, because you want empowerment so that competencies can stay. And at level five, it's the continuous process improvement paradigm that gets exploited. So again, there's commonality even in the structure of the model. And from field experiences, I can confidently tell you that it's only when competent people use a capable process can you assure predictable performance. If any one of these two is missing, predictability is nonsense. You can't predict uh, anything in this organization. And therefore, focusing only on building a capable process leaves high maturity implementations nowhere. You can build it, but you will lose it as quickly as you built it. Uh, it just takes a few people to leave the organization once their resume becomes that much better, or they become level five. And then the whole thing crumbles, okay? Now, both of these models, CMMI, Hamaturity, and PCMI, share these common themes. And what is it? If anything has to happen at high maturity, the behavioral traits, so to speak, that we have been hearing through this conference, a high maturity must ensure that there is some ability to demonstrate minimizing variation and execution outcomes. Whether they use statistics, or whether they use quantification is secondary to me, but I think from a lead appraiser perspective, there has to be that sense that there is a continuous trend of minimizing variation, and therefore there is some sense for a stable operating environment. And this stable operating environment has to have an ability to arrest any impact of variation any common cause impact of variation by the definition of what we use as common cause and special cause, okay? Good news, both the frameworks have process areas. 
Within the CMMI constellations, you have the organizational process focus and process definition at level three. And People CMM has two complementary process areas called competency analysis and competency development. <coughs> Almost exactly the same as what you would do in organization process focus, you would do with competency analysis, but it, it's in a much more broader terrain. You're talking of individual competency assessments. Okay. And within PCMM, the impact of variation is arrested through quantitative performance management and organizational capability management. And its close cousins within CMMI constellations are the quantitative project management and organizational process performance. Just uh, for your information, wherever it's a people factor, I kind of highlight it in red. Wherever it's a technical thing, it is kind of always in black. Okay? So if you see a red color font, it means it's a humanistic thing. It's a people thing. And both the frameworks actually share the same common objective, which is create an organization of lear learners by inculcating a learning orientation among practitioners. And how do you do that? You transfer out experience from project execution back into the organization. There's a process area specifically designed in people CMM called mentoring. It's not that pronounced in the CMMI constellations, but you do that through training. And there's a generic practice, GP2.5, which runs across all the three constellations where you kind of use mentoring as a recourse to bring down cost of training in the CMMI constellations. And both of these actually leverage from reuse and knowledge sharing. And the idea is you want to make process alignment the center stone for continuous performance improvement. And what is performance alignment? You take recourse to both opportunistic and proactive improvement opportunities that come your way. Uh, don't go only looking for uh, proactive improvements, like you set a target which says that in the next three months we need to find five best practices for requirement solicitation. That's a proactive uh, measure for process improvement. A more reactive would be that somebody used a questionnaire for elicitation and can this questionnaire be made generic enough for all projects to adopt. That's more of a reactive uh, process improvement strategy. And in PCMM, there's only one process area which is the humanistic side of the missing thing from the CMMI constellations called organizational performance alignment. And the two process areas of the CMMI constellations, organizational performance management and causal analysis and resolution. I know it's a kind of an overload of process area names. I'm just dropping these process area names. Bear with me till the next section, where we are going to now stratify the whole discussion only to the five PAs of the PCMI, okay? Now, if you did, or this is my experience of having done postmortems of high maturity organizations, and the top 10 people factors for why process stability is being affected. There's a high churn resulting from no active retention policies. This has nothing to do with the technical aspects of a process definition, okay? And unfortunately, the more competent people are the ones who leave first because they can't uh, kind of live in a culture which is kind of chaotic. Inability to ensure individuals are productively employed with a competency focus. You hire a person to do innovation and give him the job of a tech writer. Okay, so it's underutilization of talent. Lack of recognition of individual competencies leading to a decay of unit level competencies. These are the top 10 factors. I'll list five here. In the next slide, I'll have five more. Lack of guidance to make informed decisions using experienced individuals, especially true in our setting, where attrition is kind of high in the parts that we work in, which is the East. And uh, there are no mentors or coaches who can preserve the organizational learning, which can be transferred out to individuals who come on board. And employees care enough about professional development. I mean, organizational loyalties aside, I think they care more for their professional guts rather than loyalty. So seek opportunities where available. Then there are more people issues, the other five. Uh, breakdown of coordination because of just-in-time staffing requirements. And what do you mean by just-in-time? A project needs to be staffed with a resource he is onboarded the previous night. There's no time for knowledge transfer. That's the other big issue. Lack of an appropriate compensation strategy to attract, retain, and grow talent. Everybody gets the flavor of the month increment and the flavor of the month bonuses. No recognition for competencies that are critical and what are needed for the organization. 
And obviously, employees like to work in a caring or less hostile work environment. This is something that is completely captured in a process area called work environment in people's CMM. You don't have a similar parallel in the three CMMI constellations. Uh, and the best of knowledge transfer resulting from documentation is no substitute for their audit competency. So you can ask the person who is going to leave to create tons and tons of paperwork of what he has in his brain, but that's no substitute for the one who's leaving. And unfortunately, those who leave don't do so by just leaving alone. They take their whole flock together. Okay? And when the flock flies, I think it's time for the organization to take notice that there is smoke and there is fire too in the organization. Now, the business justifications. We saw top 10 people factors. We will now see the top 10 business justifications for why high maturity enactments, if you're not already considering PCMM, must consider PCMM. Okay? The structure of the two frameworks are the same. Same maturity hierarchy, level two to level five, and you have process areas, which are pretty much close cousins because PCMM is not some uh, different framework that emerged from outer space, but it is just a derivative of the CMMs, and CMMIs are based on CMMs, right? So the generic goal actually helps to improve the process capability through institutional innovation, and the intent is to grow process area capability. And the recognition of the PCMM is while you have a process definition, which will definitely impact the process, the workforce capability definitely impacts the workforce performance. So that's the recognition that the PCMM brought to the table. And the good news again is you need similar competencies for individuals to work the designs of both the frameworks. So someone who is an SCPG member of the CMMI constellation can pretty much double up as the SCPG member for the people CMM implementation. And predictability of execution is possible only when both the process capability and workforce capability or competencies are stable. Just want to kind of throw in a hint here. The CMMI does a good job of defining what is process capability. It does not have any practice which will help you to define what workforce capability is. And we will see why the PCMM process areas that I'm going to describe to you will help you fill in that gap. Okay? Just, just wait for a minute. More business justification. You have to use the right model to really solve the problems which are true to uh, a postmodern. So if it's the people issue, which is attrition related, you can't use CMMI constellation. You have to use the people CMM to make sure that attrition management and knowledge retention becomes the core focus of the organization. And uh, the competency development aspect, particularly, particularly relevant in the conditions that we work in, where technology changes by the day, uh, you definitely need to have a strong focus on the word competency. And it's a little more exalted in the PCMM. It's not just knowledge and skills, it's also about process abilities. And we will see why that distinction is critical. And there's also this focus on improving or growing your workforce competencies so that there's a higher return on investment. And in order to do all this, you also have to kind of address the process stability and project stability issues because having a process definition is not the thing that really causes instability. It is the people factors which is lacking in the organization which actually causes the instability in the process. So nobody ever complains that not having a defined process is the reason why they have so much of instability in the project. Okay? So we will see what are the other issues. Now for the core of the five process areas, I'm going to uh, kind of explore at a reasonable depth what these five process areas are. Uh, and explore how to best exploit the synergy between high maturity implementation and the five PCMM process areas. We'll literally get our hands dirty, and uh, thankfully I have a small group, which means uh, I was able to get some uh, white sheets of paper, which will be sufficient for this group. Uh, I would appreciate you taking a sheet and passing it along. Yeah. Now, the first process area is competency analysis, the purpose of which is to identify three things, knowledge, skills, and process abilities that are required to perform the organization's business activities so that it is used as basis to develop workforce practices. 
Now this is 